Hey guys, it's Dr. Brown with Kubo Math coming to you from Tarlock City, Philippines. And as promised, we're working a few more problems on with implicit differentiation. So let's get after it. Hey, I used to work in a gravel pit years ago when I was a young man and a technician. So this one has meaning. We have a gravel conveyor here that's giving me 10 cubic feet per minute of, of let's say sand coming down onto a pile here and it makes a big cone. So the question is, um, with that 10 cubic feet per minute and the base is three times, excuse yeah, the base is three times the height. So the sand, as you know, just spreads out and eventually starts piling up. But it, then as it gets so high, it rolls out. So the base is three times the height. So they're asking at what rate is the height changing when the height equals 15 feet? Oh, it's a good differentiation or a good uh, implicit differentiation problem. Okay, so we know since this is making a cone, we know that the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h, okay? And they're asking us for what's the rate of change of the height. So they're asking for dh dt. They want to know what that is. Now, in this case, we have uh, the sand coming down out of this conveyor and since it's in units of cubic feet, I know that's a unit of volume. So the change in my volume, ah, the dH dt, excuse me, that's dV dt, dV dt, the rate of change of volume with respect to time is 10 cubic feet per minute. Okay, I think we about have everything we need. Well, except, okay, this formula is in, it has a radius. Well, we know the radius is half that diameter. So R equals my base over two, which means 3H over two then would be getting R associated with the height. Now then, I can just take this plug it in for R, and away we go. So volume equals one-third pi 3H over 2 squared. So now I've replaced R times H. So let's work through this. We've got volume equals one-third pi. 3 squared is 9. H squared is H squared. 2 squared is 4 times H. So 9 over 3 would give me 3. So I have 3 over 4 pi h cubed. Okay, that's my volume. Now we're ready to differentiate both sides with respect to time. So we're trying to take that and differentiate that with respect to time. So now I have the derivative of, of my volume would be dV dt, and that equals, all of this is a constant, so I'll pull those outside and now take the derivative of h, which would be 3h squared dH dt. Whoa, you can see how this is shaping up. Okay, now I'm going to divide by all of this because we know h, the, the point in time where they want to know dh dt, h is 15 feet. We know dv dt is 10 cubic feet per minute. So we know everything and can solve for dh dt. So here I have dv dt divided by See, 3 times 3 is 9, so I have 9 over 4 pi h squared. Okay, that equals dh dt. Now, let's go up here. 
So I have 10 cubic feet per minute, 10 cubic feet per minute divided by, I'm going to flip the four up here, so it'll be nine underneath pi times 15 feet squared, 15 feet squared. Okay, so that would equal, I'm going to take this 10 and change it into 2 times 5 cubic feet divided by 9 times pi times 15 feet squared. So we'll do some old school calculations here. That's 3 times 5 times 3 times 5 feet squared. This five and that five cancel. So now I have, and then the feet cubed divided by feet square gives me feet, oh, and that's cubic feet per minute, sorry. So I end up with feet per minute. And this is eight, four times two is eight. Now I have nine times nine is 81. 81 times 5, so I have 405 pi, 8 over 405 pi feet per minute is how fast DH, DT is going on. And I couldn't have written that any sloppier right there. So that's DH, DT. Is changing that much, which is a small amount, feet per minute when the height is 15 feet of this uh, pyramid of sand. Isn't that cool? Okay, one down. Let me erase this now. I try to pick out a few problems that Sometimes share my background. I mean, this problem would really get complicated if, if it's in one of the barges that we used to have that had sides on it. And then once the sand gets all the way to the side, it's now growing up also. So the geometry of this totally changes. That would be a complex problem. Okay, our second problem here I don't get tangled in my cord. Okay, the second problem, we have two airplanes flying along. This airplane, and I'm not an artist by any stretch of the imagination, but this red thing is an airplane, okay? So is this one. All right, this guy, he's on the flying along, say on the x-axis, this guy is on the y. But this one's traveling this direction at two at 450 miles per hour. Now he's 200, he or she, they're 225 miles from this point. This other guy or gal is traveling this direction. They're 300 miles out and they're traveling 600 miles per hour. So the question is, at what rate is the distance between the planes decreasing. And the distance between the plane would be the hypotenuse of this triangle. Then the second question, which is a very important one, would be how much time is remaining before they collide? Hmm. Pretty serious problem. Okay. Um, we know if this is y, and this is x, we know that x squared plus y squared equals, that is s, s squared. So we know that. And since this is 300 and this is 225, so we have x would be 225 miles squared plus, as a matter of fact, I'm going to change that to s and put this as a square root plus 300 miles squared, and the square root of that 
it tells me that S equals 375. Okay? So nothing complicated about that. Something else we can observe is here is Y dy dt, hey, this could be useful, dy dt equals 600 miles per hour. dx dt is 450 miles per hour. Okay. All right, so now then it wants to know what the distance, how, what this rate of distance is changing. So they really want to know ds dt. So let me say I have this x squared plus y squared equals s squared. So if I differentiate this with respect to time, so we're going to do a d dt. So now I have the derivative of x squared with respect to time is 2x dx dt plus the derivative of y to the second power would be 2y to the first power dy dt and that equals 2s ds dt. Hey, okay. So now then, if I want to solve for ds dt, which is what they're asking, I can just divide by 2s. Okay, so that wipes these out. And that would equal ds dt, the rate of change between the two planes with respect to time. So now I have 2 times x, which is 225 miles times dx dt, which we said was 450 miles per hour, plus, so I've got 2 and x dx dt plus 2 times y, which was 300 miles you can hear that rooster crowing across the road again, <laughs> times dy dt, which was 600 miles per hour. Okay, now you'll notice from a unit's perspective, you're going to end up with, of course, I haven't forgot my 2s here, and what do we say s was? 375 miles. Okay. You'll notice I have miles times miles per hour. So I end up with miles square per hour. It's the same over here, plus miles square per hour. And I'm going to divide that by miles. So I end up with something per hour, or miles per hour. So because one of those miles is going to cancel. So it's always important to keep up with the units here. And, and we would think that because what's the rate of change of that distance? It would have to be in velocity terms. So it'd have to be in miles per hour. Okay, so if you go through all the calculations here, you end up with the rate of change of that is 750 miles per hour is what ds dt equals. Okay, now the next question remaining before those two planes run into each other. Well, we know distance equals velocity times time because I have miles per hour, and if I take and multiply that by hours, the hours cancel and I end up with miles, which is a unit of distance. Of course, you can always just look at this and say, well, 225 miles, and he's traveling twice that 
speed per hour, it's only going to take him 30 minutes to get there. It's half an hour. This guy, this one's much easier to see. He's 600 miles per hour, and he only has 300 miles to go, so it takes him 30 minutes. So they've got 30 minutes to avoid a collision here. Okay, this was two problems on implicit differentiation. Hopefully you like them. Why are we doing this? So that together we can build a better tomorrow and do that through math. So study, study, study. That's all for now, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.